All right, it says we're live. Uh, I just wanted to say hello, everyone. I'm Rob with ScrappyDoo.com, and this is ScrappyDoo Live, where we can help answer some questions and give you some tutorials as well. Uh, I'd like to introduce the panel that we have here. We do have Ken, and I'll let him tell you who he is, where you can find him. So go ahead, Ken. All right. Hi, guys. My name's Ken. I'm with Ken's Creations. You can find me on my blog at www.creativeken.blogspot.com and I'm also on YouTube under Ken's Creations where I do post some tutorial videos and all of my projects so that way you can do the same projects. Alright, uh, the, the other person we have on, on the panel is is Michelle. However, she's uh, currently feeding her cats right now. But uh, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go ahead and tell you, tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I am in the military. I, I'm helping my wife out with her website, uh, scrappydoo.com. Um, I joined I joined the military back in back in 2007, and um, back in, in 2009, that's when she decided to create the Scrappy Doo website. And I thought that possibly I could help her out as well by doing video tutorials because originally, prior to the military, I would I wanted to become a teacher. So doing these video tutorials sort of helps me. Um, fulfill that dream of, of teaching anyway. You know, I love to teach, but uh, we, we got started back in 2009 because we wanted to, to for her to have a job that uh, traveled with her, and she she's, she, she was on like a hardcore scrapbooker, but now she spends most of her time designing stuff. But, but um, yeah, back in 2009, we, uh, we decided to, to make our own paper piecings, and I'm going to show you, show you one of our first paper piecings from back in now this is back in 2009, and I do have a little little story about it. And let me go ahead and screen share, and start this up right here. So this right here is uh, we, we named we used to name all of our piecings, and this one was called Hopper, and we used we did use shortcuts a lot in order to cut them, and we used the Cricut back then. Shortcuts a lot did was compatible with the Cricut, and we posted this. We posted our, our final layout design on Cricut, and it, what was kind of cool about that was that it actually made it in the Chirp, you know, the little Chirp magazine. And I think it accidentally slid in there because they are not one, not ones for promoting software that is compatible with theirs or was compatible. Now they're not, you know, but it was kind of cool. We got uh, we got a little recognition in the Cricut Chirp for using uh, for using something else. So I'm going to go ahead and unleash this screen share. All right. Uh, so so that's the, that's a little story about uh, about Scrappy Doo back in 2009, and we've been doing it ever since. We've you know moved the business all the way from you know started off started off in Alabama, moved moved to Indiana, moved to Korea, and now we're we're back here at Fort Campbell. But so let's go ahead and get get started with uh with, with this lesson. I don't know if Michelle's back. If she is, go ahead and chime in, Michelle. I'll we'll get you a quick introduction. But um, I just want to go over some admin stuff as far as the the Hangout goes. If you if you don't know how to use the Hangout or whatever, uh, questions. We are taking questions. We are tracking all the questions in our little comment tracker. So if you have questions at any point, go ahead and feel free to ask ask them, and we will we'll put them up there. Now just understand that there's about 30 to 60 second lag in between what we're currently talking about to what you actually see live. Okay, so we'll, we'll keep that in mind, but we'll always go back to the always go back to the questions. So today's topic is uh, is image tracing, uh, and we're going to be showing you how to do some quick image tracing in a variety of software programs. Um, and I'm, I'm going to start off with a free one, but. Uh, uh, the free one that I'm going to be talking about here is going to be Inkscape. Now, when you're talking about SVGs, why do you need an SVG? Well, the, the reason why you need an SVG is because it has a, a lot of code in behind the SVG telling your cutter where to cut. You know, it's not like an image. Image are just, images are like ones and zeros, ones and zeros. These actually have grid locations on where these lines are going to be cutting. I'm going to go show you a quick little, uh, do, do a quick screen share of, of Inkscape here. And let me find her. 
while I'm, while I'm trying to find this, can uh, do you do you trace any images? Uh, yeah, I trace a lot when it um, when I first got my silhouette uh, cameo. I was introduced into tracing, so I did a lot of tracing. I would download images from the internet or go to Google Images and ended up doing a lot of tracing and able to cut those traced images out and incorporated them into my project or cards. Um, so that way, uh, files that I could not find, whether it be SVG files or other commercial files, I would still be able to incorporate them into my projects. So, so, um, so typically, when people come and they want to trace trace items here, uh, they go on they go to Google just like you said, Ken, and they they look at images. Of, and for the, this example, we want to do an image about bowling. Okay, and uh, would you think that this type of image would be good for tracing? Negatory. Yes, uh, you're right. It's it's very complex, and this this image has millions and millions of colors and pixels, so it'd be very hard to get a trace or on on any of this. Just going with the automatic generic auto trace. So, what what images are good for uh, for tracing? You know, so. So like this, a coloring book. Coloring book pages are, are great for tracing, right, Ken? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so we, we have coloring books. Now, uh, this right here looks like it's a, it's a still image of, of, uh, of a bowling pin here. It's not, not a cartoon-like drawing. Now, this, this right here, to me, I would probably trace this only if I was trying to do a print-and-cut type of image. Okay. And... So these these right here these are the better types of images to trace you know where they they're limited on color and they're nice solid strip solid lines that can can be traced so like this bowling pin here and uh, silhouettes I mean silhouettes are are great for for tracing inside uh, Inkscape or whatever program you're using so here's another cartoon example and we're going to go into Inkscape here so that was just my little photo preview and I'll go back to back to showing you some Inkscape <clears throat> um, all right here it is all right that's Hopper I'll go back to Inkscape for you all right so like like I said here's here's a couple you know here's a little little test for you on how you can tell something is a vector and something is an image. So just based off of this, what you see here, Ken, what do you what do you think is the vector? Which one do you think is the image? Or can you can you tell? I would say that the vector is image A. Image A, okay. So uh, a good way to tell if the image is a vector or not is you need to zoom in. You know, zoom in real tight. And I got the little zoom tool here, and we're just gonna keep on zooming in here. And hopefully, you guys can see this on Google. You you see the pixelation. Um, so you're you're right, Ken. B is the image, and I'm gonna do the same thing to image A, or vector A, I guess. As I you know, you see how crisp and clean those lines are, just zooming in, and you don't get any pixelation. And that's because uh, as opposed to pictures which are zeros and ones, there's actually code behind this letting this program know that, hey, I need a line drawn from here to here, and I need you to connect it for me. All right. So so how do you do a quick trace in, in Inkscape? Well, it's uh, it's quite easy. I do have a YouTube tutorial on this. Uh, you can just search uh, SVG, and I think you can even tie the word cricket in there, and it will it will find it. But we're going to go ahead and you need to bring the image in first. And you can always bring the image in by going to File and then Import. Okay. Import. A little menu will pop up and you can find your your image that you would like to trace. Okay. So I already have this image here. It's, it's fine. And I'm just going to select that. So you also notice that it is an image in Inkscape because down here below you'll you'll see the uh, you'll see the little image button down here. You, you select it, and you'll you'll notice a little panel down at the bottom, and it says that it is an image. 
All right, so you select that, and then you go up to File. I mean, sorry, you go to Path, then you go to Trace Bitmap, and then over here, Brightness Cutoff. You can use Brightness Cutoff, and the threshold here is uh, you're going to have to play with the threshold that you see. Just move it up and down, and you can click the OK button, and you should be able to see how well that trace did. Now, something that I would that I always recommend anyone doing an Inkscape, uh, like I said, this is a free program, is I go always go to View, Display Mode, and then Outline, because this is what your cutter will be seeing whenever it decides to cut. You know, they're going to see these lines. So, so that's how you do a, a quick basic trace in an in Inkscape. If you have something that has colors in it, I'll show you that, like this bowling pin, you can. You know, this right here is an image, and I was able to get these two slices out of that trace. And I, all you have to do on this is select it and do the same thing. Go to Path, Trace Bitmap, and over here you're going to go to Color Scans. And you count how many colors you have there, and you add one to it. So I see gray, black, red, so I see three, so I'm going to add one. I'm going to make it four. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And... You can see that I got my nice colored bowling pin over there. And if you'd like to split it up like I did, you can always go to, uh, I believe I went to Path and Break Apart. And I was able to, I was able to, uh, I believe, pull them apart. I guess I can't do it right now, but maybe it was Path and, oh, uh, I'll have to get back to you on that. It's not, it's not working the way I wanted group of three. So it says it's a group, so I'm just going to go to uh, ob object on group, and that should work. There we go. So there you go. That's how you. That's how I got those images in the black one you can you can toss out. So that's that's how you do a quick basic scan in, uh, in Inkscape. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the show over to uh, Ken here, and he's going to show us... I'll let you explain what you're going to show us. Sure. Um, I do two different uh, programs. I use Cricut uh, Design Space and the Silhouette Studio software. Um, currently on Cricut Design Space there isn't a per se trace function. Um, however, there is, um, let me show you here, let me bring up Cricut Canvas here. Um, they have a feature under, when you're uploading an image in Cricut Design Space, if you go to the basic upload um, it's going to have you, of course, select your file. So if I go into one of my scrappy do files here, and let's say I just bring in the Care Bear file, um, and I look at a PNG file, it's going to ask me, is this a simple image, a complex, or a or moderately complex, or a very complex, which this is a very complex. It's going to bring up the image, and it's basically going to say what... Uh, there's a magic wand up here and an erase function. The magic wand will actually let you take away pieces that you don't want to be part of your image. If you, uh, after you trace this, if I didn't want this part of this rainbow to be there, I could take it away. Um, I obviously want those to be there. There's also an erase function. If I wanted to take away full pieces of it, I could erase it. Um, and so essentially, I can go around and piece whatever I want to. And there is a uh, zoom over here to where I can kind of come down on this whole piece here to see the whole thing. I can crop it over here by cropping different pieces of it and that will also crop it. Once I'm done I hit continue to step three. It's basically going to show me as you can see whatever pieces I um, as you can see it just finished it there but whatever pieces I kept part of uh, the file it's going to make a black outline. Now, um, why would I use this? I would use this as a shadow piece. I could use this as a background piece. I've actually seen some people uh, use this as a uh, roundabout way of doing a print and cut file. They'll actually uh, get this piece here. They will do what's called where they will place this where it would be on their mat. If this was a 12 by 12 mat and they would actually attach this um, that's one feature is attaching it to where it won't move on your mat and then they would actually print it on their home printer and then cut it using uh, the Cricut Explorer. Uh, that feature, the actual cut, print and cut feature on the Cricut Explorer is coming uh, sometime this year. 
uh, but this is a roundabout way of doing that currently on the Cricut Explorer. So that's one way of doing the trace feature in the Cricut Explorer. Uh, they don't per se, I'd say, have a what they call a trace feature as of it right now. This is as close to a trace feature that I would say that would cut around your image that you would say that would be the same as in the Silhouette Studio software or the Inkscape. Uh, yeah, so so as you can see, it's uh, in in the Cricut, it's a it's a little basic, you know. So if you if you're thinking that you're needing a little more than that basic trace, you can you can always try the, the um, you know you can always try Inkscape, or if you want to go for the the paid versions, you can go make the cut, you can go um, shortcuts a lot, you know, anything that can export an SVG for you in order to use in the Cricut design space. Correct. Yeah. Um, usually, I'll be honest, when I uh, end up doing a trace feature, um, I usually go to my Silhouette Studio software. I'll show you that real quick. Um, Silhouette Studio, I have the upgraded version. Um, some people have had some, some problems with it, and I've been pretty fortunate. When I am looking for an image for a Silhouette uh, trace, I'll usually go to Google, and I'll look up, uh, for example, Mickey Mouse, and then I'll go to this image tabs. What you're looking for, um, besides, as you can see, it'll come up with coloring pages here, drawing. I usually go for the coloring pages. If I go for a color piece, what you're looking for is the higher quality photos. So if you hover your mouse over them, it's going to tell you, like, this one's 250 by 250. The smaller the image, the less uh, quality. Um, the image I found that I liked for this demonstration was a Mickey and Minnie file down here, right here. So if you select the image and actually go over here to where it says view image, it will bring up your image and you can either click and drag that. I always right click and save image to my desktop. Once the image is on your desktop, you can actually import it into your Silhouette Studio software, or I just like to click and drag it into my, my uh, Studio software that way. The trace feature on this one is up here. It's a little butterfly inside of a square. So you're going to select that, and you're going to draw a box on whatever you're going to be tracing. It's going to turn it yellow. Uh, where you're going to concentrate at first is down below here and you have high pass filter, low pass filter, threshold, and scale. The difference is high pass filter basically is going to concentrate all of the, um, basically it's going to set the trace lines from the beginning from the outside of your image and work in. So your yellow is going to go from the outside and work in, where your low pass uh, filter is going to work from the center of your image out. Threshold is just how much of it, so obviously the higher the threshold, as you can see, goes up, and then scale is how uh, fine your line is. So I always turn my high pass filter off because I like to work with the, um, with the low pass, and I will actually turn my threshold usually all the way up, so I won't actually work with any filter usually, and I'll turn it all the way up until my image is pretty much full. Um, sometimes I'll mess with the scale, and once you have your image all the way full, the most important part is you just want to make sure you have yellow all the way around. You don't want to have any breaks, because if you do, you will not get a line there, because it's going to draw wherever the yellow is. You can trace at this point. The difference you have here is you have trace, which is going to trace everything. So if I was to hit trace, it's going to trace, well, I'll show you here it's going to trace everything. So actually, if I was to cut this image, it's going to cut out the eyes, it's going to cut out the hands and everything. If I don't want that option, I can actually hit trace outer edge. And this is the one I use most of the time. Because what that's going to do is it's just going to give me a trace around the outer edge of my file. So that way, when I cut it, it's just cutting around the edge of Mickey here. The other one is the trace and detach. And this one I use a lot, and I'll bring in a file for this. Um, I use this one a lot if I'm actually, oops, a bit out of that.
this is one thing about the software I don't like is it will freeze on you. The trace and detach is really good if you have multiple images. So for example, on let me show you some scrappy do files here. Um, if I wanted to take a look at the uh, the Royalty Palace PNG and I wanted to bring that in and trace and detach. So what I mean is if I actually brought in this PNG file and wanted to trace and detach, you can actually trace a certain part. And then trace and detach and it will actually detach it from the rest of the images. And then you could get rid of that piece and then you just have this couple here that has been traced and detached from the rest of the image. So sometimes if I want a certain grouping and it's all put together, I'll also do that to detach it from the rest of the, the images. So that's the main reason I'll use trace and detach. So that's the main, main things I use trace in Silhouette Studio software and it seems to work really good for me in the past. A good deal. Like a like another thing I'd bring up on on tracing images, the the smaller the file, I meant the smaller the size of the photo, the worse you're you're going to get. You know, so don't yep. don't, go, don't go try and scan a scan a thumbnail or you know you you want the full blown image if, if possible to, for uh, for scanning and cutting. Correct. Yeah. When I when I do it, like I said, um, I will. And that that was the biggest lesson I learned is I'll hover over, like I said, and look for this number down here. The, the higher the number, the better quality the photo. And Silhouette Studio software will tell you if you import like this one here is a 1920 by 1080, that's going to be a, a higher quality photo. You're going to get a much, much better trace on that. Um, and Silhouette Studio software, if you try to bring in a lower quality photo, it will tell you right away. It will say this is a lower quality. Your trace isn't going to be good. Oh, yeah. Yep. Um. <clears throat> I did want to uh, want to go back into Cricut Cricut Design real quick, and, and sh you know I, I was playing around with it today. I don't I don't own an Explorer, um, but uh, I I did want to show show something that that I learned today. And as far as um, the tracing goes, so I'm going to go ahead and do a quick screen share of of uh, of the Cricut Design space, Cricut Canvas. Okay, you guys can all see that, correct? Right, Ken, you can see it. Yep. All right. All right. So, just like Ken said, you wanna you wanna upload your image, and you wanna do like I said, they, they got basic upload and vector upload, and because it's a because this one is a JPEG, it is a basic upload. It's not vectored, and I'm gonna go ahead and just go through like what what Ken said. But I'm gonna I'm gonna pick that uh, that bowling pin. Uh, just want to make sure that I grab the right one. The same bowling pin that I used in Inkscape. And I'm going to go ahead and select this and just continue to step two. Now, yeah, Ken brought up the magic wand. So the magic wand is kind of cool. You can go down here to the advanced options and adjust the tolerance if, uh, if you do have a complicated image with a lot of colors. But uh, but for, for this bowling pin, I'm just going to select the, select the white. And the, the cool thing... I want to undo this. You can click that little eyeball, and you can see that red little red outline. So you can go ahead and go. Bless you. So you can go back and uh, remove that. So so you can look at the you can look at the trace, and it captured everything. And then you can uh, I believe you can go to step three here, which is going to be finalizing it. I'm going to save the image, and. Uh, I think I, I forgot to do one step in here. See, that's a that's a bad part of doing live, but uh, I'll go through it one more time. Browse, find my bowling pin. I want to continue to step two. Once I select that, and I I, I totally forgot this. I I selected all the inside pieces as well, just so that that was showing. Uh, get the edges. Then I went to went to the save image. And then you can insert the image. So one of the things that I, I found out today, I'm just playing around with it, is using the contour. And um, I can go ahead and copy this. 
and I'm going to go click the contour button. And for this, I just want this to be the black outline. So I want to I want to hide hide those, and I can release the contour. Now now I got a solid black black image, and then I can go and paste. And now I can basically do the same thing, contour, but I, I just want to select the outer, the outer edge and select contour again. So now I can I can recolor this to make that white. And you got you got your bowling pin again. You know, you, you basically just layered it. So I, I thought that was a, a neat little thing just playing around with the cricket cricket design space and the and the canvas. Uh, all right. Uh, I'm not sure. Is uh, is Michelle? Michelle, are you with us yet? No. Uh, maybe maybe she's not. Uh, but I did want to. We did want to show the the design team uh, photos for this week. And let, let me. Can you can go ahead and take take the show real quick and just to. Uh, maybe we can go through some of the questions that we have here in the side while I try to get in contact with Michelle. Okay. Okay. And don't forget, you can just pin it using the little pin tool. Okay. You, you pin it and then use the eyeball. So I'm going to give the show back to you. Perfect. And, and you can run through some questions. I think they're in order uh, from old, from newest to last. Okay. So one question I got was... Um, I would like to know how to add a written text on a card, such as a name using the pen to write on a card in Design Space. Um, so uh, let me go ahead and share my screen here again. So the thing I learned um, a lot about in Design Space is if you have an image and you have a card, so let me go in here. And I'll just look up a basic card. The biggest thing is, is the, um, and there was a lot of confusion when this came out, is the uh, attach feature. Because you have to attach anything if you're going to write on a card. So, for example, I have this card here, and let's say I want to write my name right here in the middle. Um, the very first thing I have to do is I have to ungroup this set here. And then if I'm going to add a text, um, I can come up here and just write whatever text I'm going to write. And one cool thing up here is you can actually go to your text here and there's going to be um, this right here, which it's not working right now unfortunately in the live, but um, normally you can click on this down here and it will actually tell you the different types of text there are. So for example, there is all fonts, there's uh, fonts for writing, so, for example, if you want one that is going to be good for writing versus one that's going to be good for cutting, we'll actually say that. Um, so, and I don't know why it's not letting me show you that. Um, so, once you have your text, You're going to put it where you want it. If I don't want that part, so it's already eyeballed out. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to say I want it to be wrote in whatever color. And the last thing I want to do is I want to make sure I attach it. Oops. And group it. So I don't know if that makes sense um, on that question, uh, but the, the big thing on that is the attachment. Um, there's some videos online on the attachment, but you have to make sure you attach before you do it, because basically the attach is telling the Cricut Explorer what layer it should write on first. So if you don't attach it, it's not going to tell it what layer it needs to write on. So it's really important that you tell it what layer it's writing on. Um, the other thing about the attach, and I don't know if you guys know this, um, but the other cool thing about the attach feature is if you had, 
Um, let's say a basic image here. Let me go back and find a basic image. <clears throat> and let's say I'm doing this on a um, computer screen and I want to make sure that these uh, are exactly where they're positioned, I can actually attach these so exactly where they're at so that way when they actually go on the mat and I hit cut, they're actually going to show up exactly where I'm at because Design Space automatically has a paper saving option. So what that means is when I hit go normally, it's going to uh, put it on the paper to be in a paper saving mode. So if I want to actually move these around um, and, for example, if I want to have these to where they are uh, in different spots on the screen and that way I'm using transfer paper to put it on a computer you can do that by using the attach feature so it's a pretty cool feature so that way I've had people say hey if I don't want to separate all my colors on different mats am I able to uh, use just one mat and using the attach feature you would be able to hold your cuts in design position when they go to the cutting mat so you don't have to use that uh, the paper saving mode. Uh, All right, um, <clears throat> Michelle says there's 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 a lot of storms going on in her area, which is why she's uh, she's not on right now, but uh, she she is actively listening and uh, she'll be showing the design team stuff here once this this storm goes away. Um, I got this question here, Ken. This is this is a little from from yesterday. Like, like I said, if you guys have any questions, feel free to put them in the YouTube, put them in the live event page, because uh, we're we're tracking them all on our little comment stream tracker. But uh, this one right here, she says, "Have you had a look?" I have, and I'm currently using it. Hello. There you go. You're back. All right. Yeah. I think Michelle, <laughs> I think Michelle's storm came my way. Uh, all right. Um, yeah. So let's see here. So I don't know. I don't know if you got got my question that I was. No, you cut out before. Okay. Uh, she, she's basically asking, what are, you know, have you started using the three uh, of studio? What are your what are your likes dislikes and um, yeah you know, what are some bugs that you've seen in it? Perfect. Yeah, let me show you uh, my my uh, favorite things that I like about um, the new Silhouette software uh, upgrades is the new uh, features that you're able to cut um, per. If you come here down to this advanced feature, you're able now to cut by layer, line color, or fill color. So if you have something, for example, let me bring in, I have so much going on on the screen now. So for example, on this Aloha character here, once I go to my cut features, I can actually now cut by fill color. So in the past, you never had that feature. So 
in the past, I've um, had to be able to move everything off the mat and to separate everything. Now, it they kind of copied it, I would say, from Design Space, in my opinion, but now they separate it and say, okay, it's going to cut all of this series first. It's going to cut this. So it's going to cut by your fill color. You can also cut by your line color, so whatever the line color is around the image, or you can cut by layer. This one, in my opinion, takes a little bit longer because you have to come down here and tell what layers are the different layers. So you have to go through here and say, okay, this is layer one, this is layer two, and name the different layers. Um, but this is by far my favorite feature in the update. Um, one of the other features that I really like uh, is they've simplified all of the menus. So um, everything's nicer and cleaner. Uh, they've kind of did away with the clunky uh, what I consider the clunky look, and um, they've given the ability to uh, uh, easily go from menu to menu. My biggest complaint about this studio software is it freezes a lot, and I don't know if anyone else has had this problem, but uh, as you can see right now, as of even right now, I'm frozen, um, and I didn't even actually do anything to the software, so biggest complaint. So in the middle of your uh, program, you have to shut it down all the way. Nice. And even though you have auto save feature, which is a nice feature, uh, that's my biggest complaint. So I've actually um, saved the legacy version, and I find myself going back to that a lot. I see, I see. Yeah, but I guess that's sort of like Bill Gates trying to show Windows off, and you get the blue screen. So yep. So we <laughs> saw the we saw the frozen here live live on yep. too. <clears throat> Now, uh, I've been getting I've been getting some questions on the version numbers as far as you have if you are using Silhouette version three and you save the file in the studio version three, can the version two people can they use that version three studio? Do you know Ken? Uh, yeah, uh, to my knowledge, they are not able to. Yeah. Uh, part of the the new upgrade was. Uh, is basically version 3 is not able to share with version 2 and because of the freezing and a lot of the ability of not sharing a lot of people haven't done the upgrade. Yeah, so uh, yeah, we're waiting on waiting on stability, I guess. That's what we're, uh, yeah. we're waiting on from from the uh, silhouette design people. Correct. That, that's just like with anything. Uh, for example, make the cut version, I think they're on 4.3 and you know a version 4.3 will not work with a version 1.0 so i mean that's that's typical but i believe in the studio version 3 there's a you have there's a capability of downgrading it to legacy uh legacy studio mm -hmm. files right so yeah. you can still share that way or they can always well i guess you can't share so what or yeah so what design studio does not want you to share their studio files but you can share their svgs i think if you can export can you export svgs from studio uh, to my knowledge, no. Oh, okay. So they they got your got your corner. You can import, but you can't export. Correct. All right. Learn something new. All right. Um, this one's from from today. This this is uh this question right here. Hopefully you guys can see it. Uh, she says she's a Windows XP user. Um, you know, using Boot Camp on her Mac. She'd like to switch to 8.1. Uh, parallels, you know, parallels. Uh, there, there's VMware Fusion parallels. I know there's a there's a thing out there called I think it's called VirtualBox, and that's free. But uh, I honestly, you know, I, I did have VMware Fusion, and I switched to Parallels. And the reason why I switched to Parallels was because I was using a Pop-up Card Studio, and it, for some reason the graphics drivers, you know. For parallels compared to VMware Fusion, you know, I was running the latest on both Windows 7. Uh, it was more crisp, more clear to to use the Pop-up Card Studio. Do you use a Parallels Boot Camp? What do you use, Ken? I know you got a Mac. On what? Do, do you use uh, any Windows uh, programs on your Mac? Do you use Parallels, I... VMware Fusion, or Boot Camp? Nothing. You're strictly strictly no. Mac. Yep, I'm strictly Mac. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, uh, unfortunately. Uh, you know, Windows being out there and you having a Mac and you want to operate programs that have that is yeah. Windows only. It's sort of a sort of a must have is Windows. 
I think maybe maybe the Cricut Design Space thought about that, and they said, why why would I want to program for both and and just shove out a web version? Mm -hmm. They can always monitor it and keep it updated. But a lot of stress on the servers, a lot of stress. Uh, let me see if I have any any more questions here. Now, Ken, uh, I do have I do have one question. This is more more from our uh, I'll call I'll call it our Scrappy Do support inbox. You know, so we're we're going to crack that open right here. And what, one of the questions that was asked uh, this past week is: so we're we're using Scrap Factory Doll Doll Maker, and say I I would like to have my doll instead of being three and a half inches or wh whatever it imports as I, I would like a a four and a quarter inch doll. You know, from top to bottom, be you know roughly, you know four and a quarter. How how would you go about doing something like that? And is there any way that you can show us real quick? Yeah. Um, so the the main thing I do is, for example, if I'm in if I'm in, let's say, Cricut Design Space, and I have a Scrappy Do doll right here. Um, and this is probably the long way of doing it, but my base doll here, when I'm looking at uh, the princess here, I'm here's not, my... Hey Ken, hey, Ken, I'm not seeing your screen. You may have to screen share. Oh, I did that. Let me do that again. There you go. How about now? There we go. All right. Just, there we go. I got to, All right. I have the doll. Yep. Okay. So on this doll here in Design Space, here's my princess uh, doll here. Um... When I when I do this, and this is probably a long way, I'm not sure how everyone does it, but my, my base doll is, is right here. This is the main um, doll I'm working with here. So uh, the way I do it is I get my layers out of the way, and I literally will ungroup the image. I'll take a look at this image. I'll hit edit, and it will tell me how high she is. So this one is, is 2.4. So I'll actually hit this undo, which will regroup the whole image. I'll make it... I'll resize her bigger, and I'll just keep going until I get the size that I want. So it, it does take longer. Okay. Yeah. Now, now something that uh, you know, in, in my mind, there's uh, you can keep your keep your screen on there, Ken. The uh, if you could go back to design. Yep. Okay. The, you know, in my mind, there's basically three ways to do it, and just just like you did, you're, you're like, uh, you know. Trial, you know, stretch it out, see what it looks like. Now in Cricut Design Space, I think in, in the top left corner there, you can bring on the grid lines. Mm -hmm. And I, I call this like the eyeball method. You know, you use the grid lines. I don't know if you can see it on his his screen. I can't. I don't think I can see it. Yeah, but uh, but believe me, they're they're there. Let's see. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not seeing it on there, Ken. But anyway, anyways, there should be should be like a little box on there. Do you see it on your screen? No. Nope. The oh, there we go. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, click that, toggle that on, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to see this in the video. There are grid lines, and I, I call this the eyeball method, where you can just resize the group, and you know each one of those grid squares on here, I think is a what an inch. Yeah, an inch. And, and you can size it up like that. Um, you know, I'm I'm gonna do a quick quick export real quick on on something here and I'll I'll show you another way to do it as far as the eyeball method so let me uh let me screen share me and, and for this one I'm going to use uh I'm going to use make the cut let's see all right All right, so uh, this is a scrap factory doll, and you know so, something that you can do now, now. Of course, you may have to complete this whole doll in order to get the get the entire effect. Ken Ken's uh, doll that he had did have a blackout version of the entire doll, but what you, what you can do here is I'm going to I'm going to zoom out first, and I'm going to I'm just going to go ahead and break everything, or I'm going to split everything here so I can move it. And there's the split tool down here. Um, maybe I'll have to use break. Okay, so so now now everything is is selectable. And what I will do is I will copy this copy the blackout of it. You know, your base layer. 
and I'm just going to uh, start a new layer and I'm going to paste it. And then you can size this doll and whatever program you have there's there's sizing features and we're, I'm not going to go through every single program but you can change the the height and width and you want to make sure that the proportions are are there and you can just you know say we wanted a four four and a half doll and then you can go ahead and take this group over here and you would have to match up match up that doll with that so that's you know that's another way to to resize your doll the way you the way you want to get to the size and then once you have it resized the way you want roughly where you want then you now know all those pieces now are now proportional and you you should be good to go now the um, I'll go ahead and undo all that and show you show you real quick the the last way to do this is uh, you size just you pick one piece, one piece to size out of the whole thing, you know, like, like I did right here. I copied and pasted it, and say I, I wanted um, a height, height-wise of, you know, we'll, we'll make this a little small. You know, we'll make it uh, one and a half inches high. Okay, so you have to do you have to do a little math. You know, you can bring up bring up the calculator. C A L C. And you take the height of this, which is 5.01, so we'll basically call that 5. And then we take the height here, 1.5. So you take 5, divide by 1.5. And that, that's your ratio of that you need to do. So I'm going to reverse those numbers real quick. So we'll take the 1.5 and the 5. So we'll do 1.5 divided by 5. Okay. So so basically it's a it's a third of the height. So that 0.3, you you select everything here, and at least make the cut anyway. You can alter everything by 33. You know we'll just do 33 percent. Oh, that was 33. You got to do the percent sign. Undo that. See, live, I tell you, kills you. <laughs> 33%. I hope you guys select the one that you needed. Select the one you needed. And, gosh, 33%. 33%. And you should you should be at the, the doll height of, you know, rough, get you roughly around one and a, one and a half. But I don't know. You, you, there, there's, there's funny math. Funny math. So that that'd be an, another way of of doing it. All right. Um, so let's. I think that's that's about it for for tracing and sizing. We'll see if we have any have any more questions here. One thing on the so let's do. I want to let people know on the ver the new version, you are able to save in the new version on version 2 or the legacy version. So so there is that option if people did do the update, you can save a file using the old legacy, legacy uh, file. Oh, okay. Good, uh, good to know. All right. <clears throat> all right. Um, all right, so th this last part here, I want to do a quick, quick talk about of, oh, let me find my screen here. But I want to do a quick, quick scrappy scrap factory uh, update with everyone on what's what's going on new with with the scrap factory program. So uh, let me go ahead and share the scrap factory. So basically, with the with the new scrap factory, if you go to let me go up here and scrap factory. Right, so we there's some there's some new expansion packs coming out, and uh, uh, they're made by SusanBlueRobot.com, and uh, I believe you you have you have uh, you have a couple of her packs, right, Ken? Mm -hmm. you, have the, you have the new pack that uh, that's coming out, and it's called uh, Barnyard Friends. Okay, and so with the Barnyard Friends, I'm going to show it to you real quick. 
what she has done. is she has given us animals okay so we we have we have five more animals for the barnyard set we have a bear we have a cow we have a duck we have a frog and we have a pig now one of the one of the cool things about uh, this pack right here is that it matches up with all the outfits that you currently have that are from scrappy doo so she she went in. She designed all these, uh, all these little animals, and she made it so that they fit the outfits. And you, you have to use the mix and match feature, of course. So I'm going to go ahead and click that, and it's going to go ahead and search, search all the expansion packs that are, I currently own, and it's going to find out all the outfits that are compatible with it. So for example, we have the bear, and then you can just go. You can you can ignore the hairstyle. And you can go to the outfit, and all these outfits will fit that bear. So you can have a, a diva bear, or you can have you can have a chef bear. So that's kind of cool, and you can always add all the accessories as well, all the accessories that you currently have. Now, keep in mind that that this expansion pack. So if you just have the basic model, you know, if you have the scrap factory base model, uh, all the clothes that are in the base model will fit these animals. Okay, so that's kind of cool. And then here's another sneak peek of of what she's she has next coming out here. And uh, Ken hasn't saw this one yet, but so we'll get his his first impressions from it. And it's called uh, it's called Zoo Friends from uh, from Susan over there at SusanBlueRobot.com. And I'm gonna take the mix and match off just so we can see what are the Zoo Friends. So we so with this one uh, we have elephants, we have the giraffe. We have kangaroo, koala, <laughs> and zebra. Okay, so now you can complete your barnyard and zoo zoo collection with with um with the scrap factory. Now I I wanted to show you some of the designs that she came out with uh, using mix and matching with Pop Up Card Studio and uh, Scrap Factory dolls. And and if you're ever wanting to know more about the uh, the Pop Up Card Studio and how to incorporate Scrap Factory dolls. Uh, every time she comes out with one of these uh, cool little books, she puts out a little video showing you how to how to do it. So go ahead and go over to SusanBlueRobot.com and you can check out uh, you know, her, her, um, her videos on how to incorporate that with Pop-Up Card Studio. So where, where can you get these, uh, these little patterns? But um, before you go check that out, I would like to show you the uh, the photos. So let me go ahead and screen share some of the photos that she has. So this right here is the uh, the photos. So if you're looking at this card, it is it is in 3D, and like I said, you can go check out her website, and she'll show you how this is done in Pop Up Card Studio. So she has the frog, and uh, I call it like a Han Solo kind of vest. Then you have uh, Ducky Diva. They're all diva out with her pumps. You have Little Porky. And if, if you haven't noticed anything about Susan Blue Robot, she, she loves robots, so she she incorporated a robot in there. The uh, you got the honey honey bear. And then you got the move over cow. Okay. So the so that just gives you a little taste of what what you can do with these little piecings. So if uh, if you do if if you would like these for Scrap Factory, you can go to uh, and I'll I'll put it up here. If you head over to the Scrap Factory website, and I'll I'll put let me uh, let me get rid of my screen share. Come over to me. I don't know. Were, were, were you guys able to see that? I, th I think I, I think I boxed Ken again, and I didn't didn't see it. But uh, well, I guess let me let me show you show you again, because I, I do want to make sure that she you get to see some of these piecings. So there, like I said, there's the there's a Mukas Moo, there's the Honey Bear Bear, there's your Porky Pig, there's your Diva Duck. And there's the frog. Now all these images are on the website, and I'll I'll give you that link here, and you can go check it out. Now she did, uh, she was kind enough to 
for all the viewers that are, are viewing this, and it's going to be the first 25 people, first 25 people to check out, they'll get a get a little special savings at the checkout. So let me get off my screen share, and I'll post up the link that you guys can that you guys can go to. Let me post this. All right, uh, I'll put that on here. And, oh, hold on, continue. I need to increase my screen here. All right, so go ahead and go, go check this out. It's it's scrap it's dash twelve dot com slash scrap factory slash barnyard and if you use the when when you check out with her because you're not going to be checking out with scrappy do or dash twelve you're going to be checking out on on her stuff because that's what we do for the designers that come up with stuff and if you type in scrappy live and I'm, I'll, I'm just want to make sure that this coupon code is correct I'm going to pull up pull up the email but I believe if you if you type in Scrappy Live, and it will give you it'll give you a dollar savings on that. And let me check this link just to make sure. So what do you what, what do you think of the new uh, the new expansion packs that she came out with? Pretty pretty good. You like them? You see a lot of designing in that, Ken? Yeah, the zoo the zoo pals are going to be amazing. Those are awesome. Yeah, I was I was telling her that. Uh, that you know you can you can come up with more stuff with it too you know come up with uh, overalls you know for kids you can come up with uh, you know accessories like tractors barns so she mm -hmm. she may be coming out for it when I when I talk to her last all right uh, oh uh, while while I'm searching for this I uh, you know back when we talked about the cricket and print print and cut uh, there is something called a hinge method and if you go to scrappydo.com slash hinge uh, you can check out Clever Sunday's um, her tutorial on how to do a print and cut using the Explorer in the Cricut Design Space. I mean, you can use that type of method in the Cricut Design Space. Um, all right, checking this email. Yeah, so so the barnyard is uh, is five dollars. Zoo is five dollars. And uh, if you for the first twenty five people to check out, if they use Scrappy D. It says a uh, Scrappy Live, so I'll put that on here. If you use that Scrappy Live with the barn people, the barnyard friends, you will get uh, get a dollar off. Uh, first 25 people, and the zoo. If you use Scrappy Live two, you will get you'll get another uh, another discount. And if you're wanting the zoo, I'll put a link on the barnyard page for that as well. So uh, I just while we're while we had this live session here, I just went ahead and and uploaded the page. It should be you see the you see the new live barn place, Ken? Is it live? Uh, I don't see. I see the barnyard, but I don't see the yep. zoo pals. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, you don't see zoo. Um, yeah, I'll, I'm gonna put that link up there for okay the, for the zoo. All right, uh, let's go through some. See if there's any more questions in here, and then we'll. We'll wrap this up. I, I guess the storm is still too bad for Michelle to show off the design team stuff, so apologize for that uh, ahead of time. All right, uh, I'll, I'll post post some of these here. So we got. Um, let me get rid of my drawing tool. All right, so let's see. Oh, I don't. I think I lost it. All right, so we answered that one. Um, yeah, so it lo looks like Susan is uh, Susan is answering some questions in there. Got uh, from from Smith. It says uh, great addition. So they they like that. Um, uh, Jerry asks, uh, how often are you going to be doing hangouts? We're going to try to do them every Wednesday. Um, as long as we all can be here, you know, it's 
um, you know, just up to all of our schedules. But we're going to try for Wednesday. Uh, we're going to try for 9 p.m. Eastern time every week. And we'll, we'll pick topics, and, and hopefully you guys can come out and you can give us some feedback before the live hangout so we can know how to gear, gear it towards. Um, but we, we did have good participation uh, this time. All right, so I'll take that one off. Um, topic coming tonight. Oh, here's here's one from Angie. She said, when I bring in an SVG from Scrap Factory to, M to MTC, how can I separate the original image so that it doesn't layer with the other pieces and remains uh, one image? Okay, uh, Okay, so in I, I can I can answer that one real quick uh, for you. Let me let me screen share. All right, so in in make the cut, I'm gonna go ahead and undo here. Let's see. So I I, I believe the the item that she is talking about is right here, the bottom the bottom right. And in order to keep that all together in one layer, you can you select it first, you know, select all of it, and then over in your layer panel, uh, you click this little button here that says uh, "Selection to New Layer," and that will put it on its own own layer. You can you can lock it, do whatever you want to it, and it won't uh, won't move because now it's its own separate entity, and it kept it remained with all its colors as well. So that's how you that's how you can do that. Use this button right here, selection to new layer, and quick cleanup is use that trash can cleans up all your blank layers. All right, uh, so let me go back to the questions. Um, let's see. All right, uh, I do see this one. This one here. Can you give a little? Little help explaining on eCal and layers and making dash lines and scoring. Now, uh, Michelle, she did plan on going over this question, and I'm probably going to have to defer to her because she's more into the uh, creating different lines. So uh, it may be well, we may have to push this topic to next Wednesday, and uh, I do apologize for that. But uh, weather, you can't you gotta you can't handle Mother Nature, right? <clears throat> I think Rob got kicked off again. You're back. Uh, I know, I know. Can you hear me? <laughs> yep. All right. Man, I do not know what Michelle's storms are doing to my network connection. If I keep uh, keep dropping. Don't know why, don't know why. Uh, I don't know where I got cut off at because I was too busy in, in the detail with the Make the Cut. Did you guys get to see the Make the Did they get to see the Make the Cut? Portion? What were you doing? <laughs> okay, so I guess you, you didn't even see that, man. Gosh, I, I must have been gone for five minutes. But uh, Angie, Angie had a question about how do you keep the the doll in the lower portion. Of oh no, we saw that. You saw that, okay. Yeah, you cut out when you were talking about Michelle um, being here for the eCal. Okay, gotcha. So I guess you didn't miss out too much. Oh, all I was gonna say is uh, Michelle's. She wanted to answer that question, and she was gonna show us tonight on how to do that. Uh, do that question, or answer that question. And I, I, I think that you, you and Michelle have been. Uh, getting you, you and Michelle have been in contact with each other over email, 
but uh, a video is always nice to see. But uh, I guess she is she is storm in a shelter right now, probably listening to this. But uh, but yeah. All right. Um, then I also said, uh, is there any more questions? I don't know if there's any more questions in the. Uh, I didn't my, see my, any. My thing reset, so I don't I don't have any comments anymore. Yeah, I don't see any other new questions. Okay. So, yeah. So, so go ahead later tonight. Check out the uh, the Scrap Factory page, the Barn People, the Barnyard Friends, and we'll we'll put a link in there with a little icon showing the the zoo people that you can go ahead and go purchase as well. And yeah. So, so next time, hopefully, hopefully we'll be we we'll back with some more more good topics. Uh, keep the keep the questions coming in. Uh, a lot of things that we'd like to do is we we gear our our you know, gear the show on on what we see in like in the forums or what the support tickets are are like in the Scrappy Doo section, you know. And that's how we that's how we've been gearing this. And if you have any questions beforehand before the show, feel free to post post where the event page is. So, I think that's it it for me. Uh, you got any? No, I'm good. It, it was, I think we're good. Good show.